Hello dear students and welcome to this important lecture on physiological responses of plants to water stress. The main objectives of this lecture are to contextualize the importance of plant adaptations to water stress in an era of global environmental change. And we will also try to explain various physiological responses of plants to water stress and subsequently we will talk about the molecular basis of physiological responses of plants to water stress. But let's begin with what we exactly mean by water stress. Dear students, plants are said to be under water stress if the environment contains insufficient water to meet their basic needs. Water stress contains both destructive and constructive elements and is a selection factor as well as a driving force improving resistance and adaptive evolution of plants. Water deficit can affect plants in a number of ways. You know, soil water availability is a fundamental factor in growth, development, species composition and even distribution of plants. So, water scarcity in soils is one of the major limitations for current agricultural and ecosystem productivity. In fact, climate change predictions by Intergovernmental Panel for Climatic Change or European Environmental Agency suggests that drought or water scarcity will become an even greater problem during the next 50 years. So, understanding soil water uptake patterns by plants and the associated plant responses to water loss during drought can potentially help us to explain differences among species in productivity, in survival, and even in distribution. Hence, reducing water use for irrigation and increasing water use efficiency. Here, by water use efficiency, we mean the yield to water consumption ratio has become a major priority in the agricultural research in the contemporary times. And in fact, the major reasons of water shortage to plants so far are concerned. They generally include high rate of evapotranspiration at low rainfall, water bound osmotically in soils, especially which is the case with saline soils, then frozen soils, which does not allow water to be taken up by the plants, then thin soil layer or sometimes underdeveloped root system because of which plants cannot reach otherwise accessible water. Dear students, plants adapt to water stress morphologically, anatomically and physiologically. So for the morphological and anatomical adaptations are concerned, they mainly include enlargement of the root system, improvement of hydraulic conductance and water transport system, then reduction of transpiring surfaces, followed by increase in the stomatal density. Then production of hairy tomentum is also one of the adaptations, followed by apoptosis of assimilation organs, I mean shedding of leaves at the beginning of drought period and so on. I so most of these morphological and anatomical adaptations have basically physiological basis. However, the underlying mechanisms of physiological processes regulating water stress in plants are complex and poorly understood. In response to drought brought about by soil water deficit, plants can exhibit either drought escape or drought resistance through different mechanisms. Drought escape is described as the ability of plants to complete the life cycle before severe stress sets in. And drought resistance mechanisms can be 
further classified into drought avoidance and drought tolerance. Drought avoidance is generally by maintenance of high tissue water potential despite a soil water deficit. Mechanisms such as improved water uptake under stress and the capacity of plant cells to hold acquired water and further reduce water loss confer drought avoidance. Plants respond to survive under water deficit conditions via a series of physiological, cellular and molecular processes culminating in stress tolerance ultimately. Plants under drought stress may survive by amongst other mechanisms maintaining cell turgor and reducing evaporative water losses by accumulating compatible solutes. Dear students, an interesting question to understand is what kind of reactions at cellular level do plants undertake in response to drought stress? Water loss may cause a number of responses at the cellular level. We generally include number one, dehydration and shrinking of the protoplast and subsequent reduction of the cell volume. Second, concentration of cellular solutions, they become too much concentrated. Third, decrease or loss of turgor and slower growth. The next is changes in the water potential gradient across the membranes. And dear students, disintegration of biomembranes and protein denaturations are other mechanisms or responses you can see at the cellular level. As a result of these, a number of metabolic changes, especially in the carbon and nitrogen metabolism, can happen in plants and even protein metabolism and amino acid synthesis is disturbed in response to water stress. Slower meristematic cell division resulting in anomalous meiosis and enhanced synthesis of abscisic acid which leads to closure of stomata are yet other responses together with changed allocation of assimilates and increased root shoot ratio. Besides having characteristic morphogenetic alterations. The students, one of the fundamental ways through which plants adapt to water stress at cellular level is the osmotic adjustments. Osmotic adjustment is a biochemical mechanism of stress tolerance in which many drought tolerant plants can regulate their solute potential to compensate for transient or extended periods of water stress. Osmotic adjustments occur when the solute concentrations within a plant cell increases to maintain a positive turgor pressure within a cell. As a result of solute accumulation, the solute potential drops, thereby promoting the water flow into the cell. Solutes which generally contribute to osmotic Adjustments include proline, dimethyl sulfonyopropionate, polyhydric alcohols such as mannitol, osmotins, etc. Dear students, one of the important things that plays a role in water stress is through abscisic acid, what we call as abscisic acid mediated water stress response of plants. Drought or water stress triggers the production of the phytohormone abscisic acid, which in turn causes stomatal closure and induces expression of stress-related genes. Mild drought stress leads to tenfold increase in the endogenous abscisic acid or what we in short form call as ABA concentration, both in case of higher and lower plants. More serious droughts proportionately increase the endogenous 
ABA concentration. This is substantiated by the fact that mutants lacking the ability of synthesizing ABA are not viable because they will uh, wither even in the slightest water stress. However, they can be kept alive by adding ABA or abscisic acid. The receptor for dehydration signal leading to ABA synthesis and accumulation is however unknown. Although biochemical mechanisms of ABA sensing is not known very clearly, it's known that the ABA receptors are located on the outside of the cell membrane and inside the protoplast. Abscisic acid reacts with stomata to influence water balance. The ABA signal is in fact detected at the outer face of the plasma membrane of the guard cells causing a fast decrease in the turgor and the closure of the stomata. It is the apoplast compartment of the guard cells that is effective in the control of ABA triggered reactions. Dear students, drought stress can have a number of impacts on proteins and lipids in the plant cells as well. Specific plant proteins display specific structural and functional features in response to water stress. Majority of water stressed plants produce new dehydrin-like proteins and dehydrins may stabilize macromolecules through detergent and chaperone-like properties and may act synergistically with compatible solutes. The steady state levels of major photosystem 2 or PS2 what you call as, I mean the proteins associated with PS2 including the D1 and D2 proteins in the PS2 reaction center, they have been found to decline with increasing water deficit thereby leading to damaged PS2 photochemistry and you can imagine the consequences of this for the process of photosynthesis. And though Rubisco is not a primary target of water deficit, yet a close relationship has also been found between Rubisco content and maximal oxygen evolution rate measured at high photosynthetic photon flux density during leaf dehydration. Moreover, decreased supply of carbon dioxide to Rubisco under both mild and severe water deficit is primarily responsible for the decrease in carbon dioxide fixation or in other words the photosynthetic efficiency. Lipids are also you know the most abundant compartments or components of the membranes and they play a typical role in resistance of plant cells to water stress. Strong water deficit leads to a disturbance of the association between membrane lipids and proteins as well as to a decrease in the enzyme activity and transport capacity of the lipid bilayer. Dear students, experimental exposure of plants to water stress has been found to provoke considerable changes in lipid metabolism, for instance in Brassica napus and increase or increasing degradation of lipids has been found to occur such as galacto and phospholipids for example as has been found in case of Vigna angulicalata. The stimulation of lipolytic activities has been found to be greater in the drought sensitive than in drought tolerant varieties. Dear students, let me tell you that all these physiological responses generally have a molecular basis. So for the molecular basis of stress, responses and tolerance to drought are concerned. During drought stress or you can say drought stress causes signal perception followed by signal transduction that results 
in gene expression ultimately. And the gene products can be functional proteins and regulatory proteins. Molecular control mechanisms for drought stress tolerance are based on the activation and regulation of specific stress related genes. Many drought inducible genes with various functions have been identified by molecular and genomic analysis in model plants such as Arabidopsis thaliana, Oryza sativa and even other plants. The products of stress inducible genes function both in the initial stress response and in the establishment of plant stress tolerance. Transcriptome analysis based on microarrays have provided powerful tools for discovery of stress responsive genes in, in, in the model species that I mentioned before. The products of the drought inducible genes identified through the recent microarray analyses can be generally classified into two broad groups. One, the functional proteins and second, the regulatory proteins. These genes are involved in the whole sequence of stress responses such as signaling, transcription control of um, protection or you can say protection of membranes and proteins and free radicals and toxic compound scavenging. I mean, these whole set of mechanisms are involved in this genetic or molecular response or molecular basis of physiological response of plants to water stress. So for the first group of proteins, I mean, the functional proteins is concerned. They include proteins that function in abiotic stress tolerance and include molecules such as chaperones, late embryogenesis abundant, what we call as LEA proteins, osmotins, antifreeze proteins, messenger RNA binding proteins, some other key enzymes for osmolite biosynthesis, even water channel proteins, sugars and proline transporters or detoxification enzymes and various proteases. The second group of regulatory proteins are involved in further regulation of signal transduction and stress responsive genes or their expression. These generally include various transcription factors, I mean protein kinases, protein phosphatases, enzymes involved in the phospholipid metabolism and other signaling molecules such as calmodulin or calmodulin binding proteins. It's important to note here that the production of transgenic crops, trees and other plants by introduction of Arabidopsis stress related genes, I mean the genes that have been identified in the Arabidopsis has proved significantly valuable for improving their tolerance to drought or water stress. Besides, such gene transfers have also been shown to serve as key tools for the discovery of stress-related genes in transgenic systems by a comparative genomic approach. In fact, genetic modifications of stress tolerance has shown and in fact promises to show highly promising results with useful implications for agriculturally and ecologically important plants. And that's why this is one of the key areas of research in the abiotic stress in the contemporary world. So dear students, this discussion allows us to learn some key points. That is, in view of the fundamental importance of water to plants, Water scarcity is one of the major limitations for plant productivity and elicits a range of responses at morphological, anatomical, physiological and even molecular levels. And dear students, I told you that physiologically 
Water stress results in the stomatal closure and reduces transpiration rates, decreases the water potential of plant tissues, causes reduction in photosynthesis and growth, also leads to accumulation of abscisic acid or prolines, mannitol and sorbitol like things. And it also is associated with the formation of radical scavenging compounds and synthesis of new proteins and messenger RNAs. I mean, these are the whole range of responses at the cellular level that plants have or they undertake in response to water stress. In addition to that, many drought-inducible functional proteins and regulatory genes with various functions have been identified by molecular and genomic analyses, the products of which function both in the initial stress response and in establishing the plant stress tolerance. Dear students, I told you abscisic acid or ABA signaling plays a vital role in the plant stress responses as evidenced by the fact that many of the drought inducible genes studied to date are also induced by ABA. So with this, I take your leave right now until we meet in the next lecture. Goodbye.